Hey everyone, my birthday is in just a week and I spoiled myself. Uh, not really, everything I have in this video is very affordable. But I got this 16 by 32 RGB panel from Adafruit. You can see some cool circuitry and things like that in there. And I also got this wicked little uh, board, this little intelligent brain essentially of the whole operation is what it's gonna be. I don't know a lot about all these different pieces. This is my first time playing around with hardware and kind of internet of things and just trying to program something cool. But I went ahead and bought a $25 RGB panel from Adafruit, it's 16 by 32. You can kind of get the idea of what we're aiming for here, right? We wanna take this little chip set and we want to program this panel with lights and things like that. And uh, this is probably a better look at the, um, at the chipset itself. So here what you're seeing, that's actually a USB-C. And so that was cool to me because I've seen some other people do things like this and it's way over my head. I'm absolutely not an expert at all. This is absolutely my first time trying to do something like this. But what was cool is that it has native USB uh, and it could show up like a disk drive. And so it seems like really easy to just kind of plug and play. So I'm pretty excited about that. We'll be able to plug it in the computer and drag and drop the code. Uh, maybe we'll start with an example, but I'm very, very excited to basically take this board here, take this chipset here, and this will be my first time doing anything like that. We got these cords here as well. So that's how we're gonna connect them to one another. That's kind of it. That's all I got. Um, let's jump right into it. Okay, so as much as possible, I'm gonna show you every single thing that I'm going to be doing. Uh, step by step, I'll walk you through what I'm gonna do. So if you decide you wanna do something like this, you can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off these two plastic covers first. You are absolutely gonna want tweezers. These little suckers are hard, they were hard to get out. Like that was a process. So take some tweezers, get off the stickers, that's step one. So the next step here, we're gonna take this microcontroller, we're gonna put it into the board. All right, so here you can see this piece is just gonna go right into there. So that's the plan. I'm gonna stick it in there, I hope it goes well. Uh, yeah, okay, it's in there. Again, I've never done anything like this, so this could be an absolute shit show, but hopefully it's not. All right, so that's plugged in there, great. So now we're gonna have to screw these guys in. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw those in. So after you've got the microcontroller into the board, you're gonna wanna go ahead and lightly put in these screws. And you're gonna wanna do it lightly because I tried to screw them in all the way and I realized you can't stick the spade connector, which is the next part of what needs to be done. We gotta stick the spade connectors to the different um, like endpoints. So if you screw these on too much, maybe like for an experienced human that would have been obvious but for me i screwed them on too much and then i tried to hook up the connectors and that was difficult so the next thing we're going to do is just i'm going to screw those in properly off camera and i'm going to connect these into the board and that way uh, we can get the connection going that looks like it definitely came a little uh tweaked so hopefully that's not a problem new discovery is that it fit that's good there's only one place for this i'm assuming the second connector is probably if you have a bigger board this is a small board so i'm assuming this is all the power that i'll need the next step is gonna to be to take this USB-C and plug it into the USB-C port. Holy crap, there's something that's ha- Oh my God, is that because I moved it? Something's happening that's pretty cool, I'm not sure. I don't have a long USB-C, so I'd love to play with it a little bit more. Let's see, I feel like maybe, I can't possibly. Oh my God, it's got motion sensors on this thing. All right, the more you know, look at that. Woohoo! that is freaking awesome all right well we can code something pretty sick on that wow all right well it's working uh let's see what we're going to do next the fact that this is going even marginally well is great news um we're going to click this reset button two times next and that should reset the board and then i think i can switch over to the computer for a bit just clicked reset twice we're shifting gears back to the computer and i'm pretty stoked look at this there's no freaking way look at that there it is it just shows up um, very, very nice. And here we have our, uh, our matrix boot. So I guess I got to figure out what to do next. Next thing I did was download CircuitPython and then I had to drag and drop a UF2 file, a .uf2 file. I don't know exactly what that stands for. I drag and drop that onto the folder that I just showed you with the board itself. Okay, so after dragging and dropping that file that I downloaded for CircuitPython into the folder, some really cool stuff happened. And so I've switched over to terminal. I just wanted to show you this because I didn't happen to catch it on camera, but now I'm moving to the D drive and I just wanted to show you all the goodness, all the stuff that we have in this folder now. Um, this is what represents the actual drive itself. I've got all these lovely things. And what's really interesting is I've got this code.py. And code.py, I'm assuming, oh sweet. 
okay, I wonder if we can just print Hello World. I read somewhere that we have to download some libraries for this to work for the board. I think there's nothing on the actual microcontroller right now because we reset it. So I probably have to go find those libraries, but I just wanted to show you right now all the things that are inside of our microcontroller when you start. And printing Hello World will be no simple feat for us in this video. So let's go ahead and start with that. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I should try to go find those libraries. Okay, so you can see here in the um, Adafruit documents, basically, they show you this library bundle. Um, and it says that you can download the Adafruit CircuitPython bundle version zip. At a minimum, we recommend the following library. So it seems like the entire collection of libraries are too large to fit. Do you see this? Too large to fit, it says right here. They're too large to fit for the entire collection. That's okay, we'll just add each library as we need it. Okay, no problem. So at a minimum, we recommend the following libraries. In fact, we more than recommend, they're basically required. So grab them and install them into CircuitPy slash lib now. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these. And then let's see what's happening after I install these libraries. Uh, let's let's figure out what to do next. All right, so I downloaded the library bundle, and you can see here are all the different. Um, these are all the different libraries that they recommend that we get. So I just started with these. I don't know what any of these do. We can read about them more later. But enough of that. I drag and dropped all of the different things into the lib folder. So inside of the microcontroller, there's this lib folder. I Got that going and let's see what we got in here. Here you can see all of the different things. Um, this is exactly just the set of things that was um, on the website itself. So I'll have the link there and you can go ahead and download these things. Uh, so far so good. I think we're getting really close to getting something up and running. So let's see what's next. Okay, so if you're following along in the docs, the next thing they have you do is connect to the internet. I don't really wanna do that right now because I'd rather just have something show up on the board itself. And so that is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna find something to show up on the board. Um, here's a code example that I found. And what I'm gonna do is copy and paste this into the code.py and see if we can get something to light up on the board itself. And so if I go to um, VS Code, what I've done is I've gotten this extension. So there's this awesome circuit Python extension for Visual Studio Code. That's gonna help me with this board. Um, and I've installed that, good to go. And then now what I want to do is basically copy and paste this in here. And oh, okay, something else I have done is also connected to the serial monitor. I realize that's at the bottom. We want to do that. So if you do control shift and P, you can op open up the command palette in VS Code and you can just type in CircuitPython open serial monitor. Um, there's other ways and other IDEs and things. So just check out the docs and see what works for you. But I'm pretty excited. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'm hoping that saving this will do something, auto reload is on, simply save files. Yes, ooh, okay. I'm gonna have to actually go ahead and show you the board is flashing some awesome stuff. All right, well, something happened, but it's less cool than I thought. There's some sort of error. So let's go ahead and figure that out. But hey, look, colors are coming onto the board. We're doing that, so that's kind of cool. Oh, okay, I got carried away. I thought it was gonna work as soon as I copy and pasted it. That's not the case. There's a runtime error. So you need at least one quote and color to your feeds. Okay, so I see that here. Um, here, uh, you can see in the code itself where we're raising the runtime error. Um, and so basically this quotes and this colors must be empty. And so we have to add quotes and colors. And what it looks like is that this code is actually cycling through quotes and colors, and it's gonna print that onto the board. Um, I don't know exactly how this is gonna work, but my guess is, here we go, there's quotes uh, array. And so we'll just say, hello world, and that'll be the, the quote we want. And then we want colors. And then I think these are probably gonna be, um, you know, a list of colors, but I do have Copilot and let's see if Copilot can help us. And then create an array called colors with the colors of the rainbow. Let's see if we can do it. Uh, sure, except I don't want this to be a I want that to be a comment. So comments are with hashtags here. Um, come on, there's gotta be, there we go. Let's see how that does. I wonder if that's actually the right format. So this is the format that it gave to me. I'm gonna go ahead and let's say these need to be strings actually. X strings, let's see if that helps it. X strings, if I delete this, delete that. 
So I'm just playing with co-pilot here because I don't know the color. There we go. I think this looks better. I don't actually know the colors of the rainbow, for example. So I'm saving it and let's see if this works. Now, if we see an error here, every time I save it because I've connected, it should just update stuff down here in the port. Um, I connected my internet at one point to try to see if that would help. Um, I don't think it did. So let's see if this works. I think it will. Connecting, connecting. Whoa, creating text. Ah, okay, now I gotta change the board. Update's good. Hey, oh, look at that. We got a loose cord in the back, that's okay. But look, it says, hello world. So we got something onto the board. That is awesome. And it's all the rainbow colors that GitHub Copilot helped populate. So we didn't even need to know those hex codes or anything. That was pretty quick. So once again, I've never ever touched a board like this, done any kind of programming like this. And honestly, in this video, we didn't even do any programming. We kind of just copy and pasted some code we found online and kind of hacked our way around, but that's totally fine. That's kind of the intent. Um, I'll make some more videos where I actually dive into the code.py files. We'll create some new things. Maybe we'll have some live Lakers scores show up, um, but we'll see. Uh, I really appreciate everyone who's uh, supporting the channel, watching the videos. If you like my content, please subscribe. I'll keep trying to come up with new videos. Um, and if you want to learn how to make more things with the aid of fruit, definitely subscribe because I'm going to be doing some new stuff uh, pretty soon, I hope. So thanks, everyone.